As our series continues, we find ourselves on the threshold of Universe 18, a realm that, for reasons shrouded in mystery, was erased from the expanse of the known multiverse by Zeno himself. This universe, unlike the twelve that are familiar to us, has been secluded in a dimension beyond the reach of mortals, deities, or any celestial beings. It's a place so isolated that entrance or exit is impossible without the unique seal bestowed by the Omni King, the same emblem he marked upon the Grand Priest with a mere touch. This peculiar universe exists in a state of isolation, floating in a void unreachable and unfathomable to all. Even Amuku and the other formidable entities, regarded as the top five mightiest beings, find themselves confined within, despite their immense power. To some, Universe 18 might seem akin to a celestial prison. But it's not quite that simple. You see, eons ago, Universe 18 vanished from the cosmos, spared from the fate that befell Universes 13 through 17, which faced destruction. However, Universe 18's survival was not a mere act of mercy. It was saved for a reason. Within this unique expanse of space and time, the concept of aging is unknown. Here, inhabitants do not grow older, and thus, the specter of death by natural aging is absent. In this newly shaped reality of Universe 18, a second generation of mortals was brought into existence, distinct from the first mortal, Zarama. This time, their creation was an experiment crafted by the Omni King himself, a test born from lessons of the past. Unlike Zarama, who was bestowed with immense power, these new beings were deliberately limited, their capabilities reduced. The Omni King was curious, could these beings attain greatness on their own, without the gift of overwhelming might or the extended lifespans afforded by godly Ki? This new breed of mortals was not graced with the godly essence that had prolonged Zarama's existence. Their physical forms demanded souls to animate them, and souls, bound by their nature, could not endure eternally. It was within the unique confines of Universe 18, where time's march did not dictate the end of life through aging, that these mortals found their place. Here, in a realm untouched by the wear of years, they could explore the limits of their strength and potential. But, while the ravages of time hold no sway, the dangers of conflict and combat remain ever-present. To truly grasp the essence of Universe 18, we must travel back to a time before it was home to mortals, back to an era when it served as the divine realm of the angelic race. This was before a devastating blow was dealt by a primordial demon god, nearly eradicating the angel population. Universe 18, rich in divine heritage, was the cradle of the Grand Priest's ancestors during a tumultuous epoch known as the Divine War. It was a period marked by chaos, as the demon god launched a fierce campaign to dethrone the reigning Omni-King, Zenosama. The aftermath of this colossal conflict left Universe 18 a desolata void, abandoned it for countless ages, until the Omni-King decreed it should be repopulated. Despite being the only divine universe within the Dragon Ball multiverse, the balance of life and power was essential. A balance now thrown into disarray with few angels left and the demon gods reduced to a mere four, all steeped in malevolence. It was in this moment of crisis that the roles of the gods of destruction and supreme kais were conceived. Lacking the divine essence and formidable power of angels or demons, they were nonetheless imbued with the capability to uphold cosmic balance. The erstwhile equilibrium maintained by angels and demons had shattered, necessitating a new order. Among the pivotal figures in this reshaping of the universe was Arak, the destroyer of Universe 5. His true lineage as the offspring of one of the surviving demon gods, a secret until his demise at the hands of the Saints, positioned him uniquely to become the inaugural god of destruction. These cataclysmic shifts, set against the backdrop of Zenosama's grand design, led to the creation of the Kais and mortals. The latter was granted the potential to harness and refine destruction energy, an essence identical to that of the demon gods. Yet, the narrative doesn't conclude here. Safeguarding the cosmos from the cyclical nature of conflict and betrayal necessitated innovative solutions. Thus, the intertwining fates of the Kais and gods of destruction were established. This symbiosis aimed to root out treachery, for if they were to clash, it would mean mutual destruction. This delicate arrangement ensured that even if animosity lingered between them, their hands were tied. In essence, 
This intricate web of alliances and dependencies was crafted to preserve the delicate balance across the multiverse. Although he was not all-knowing as most people believed, Zeno's intellect was above them all. One month time skip, well not quite. You see, since Universe 18 was uniquely inhabited by angels, its status was considerably elevated, transitioning it into a divine realm. This shift meant that time flowed differently within Universe 18, especially since it was no longer aligned with the dimensions of Universes 1 through 12. Remember, this entire universe had been moved into Zeno's personal pocket dimension. As a result, while a month might pass within Universe 18, only a mere two hours would go by in the dimensions where the other universes resided. During this interval, Akumu successfully reunited the Saints' consciousness with their bodies. To understand what transpired, we need to look back at Zeno's initial assumption. He thought the Saints' souls were caught between life and death, but this wasn't the case. The aquafoam is a potent source of power, a timeless liquid that fuels the fountain of creation. This fountain isn't just any fountain. It's a portal to one of the three known realms, places where all dimensions, even the smallest pocket ones, exist. All dimension, all multiverses and all universes fall within one of this three realm. When Vegeta got hold of the Aquafoam's energy, he was still mortal but had reached divine form strong enough to handle this immense energy without dying on the spot. However, there was a catch. He could only harness this power for three minutes as it was burning through his ki and stamina like fuel. Any longer, and it would be fatal. This incredible energy was then passed to Goku when he and Vegeta merged. Since Goku was equally strong, he too could wield it but it came with the same repercussions. Controlling this power was no small feat. They had to constantly regulate it throughout their bodies, a process that drained their stamina significantly. What they didn't realize was that by doing so, the aquafoam was burning through their energy at an alarming rate. Yet, this intense consumption was actually purifying the aquafoam, something that only the Omni King knew of. Despite their phenomenal strength, which even surpassed that of some gods, Vegeta and Goku are still only just mortals. Their bodies, organs, and souls had limits, and even though they had pushed beyond these limits countless times, inevitably, the consequences were bound to catch up. To offset the Aquafoam's effects, they needed to maintain a certain level of stamina at all times, even as they slept, as their very life depended on them being able to continuously regulate the energy within their bodies. However, their recent attempt to merge into Omnigogeta had left them utterly exhausted. Their continuous battles, with barely any time for recovery, had depleted their stamina, especially during their fight against Zalama. Even though the Aquafoam had been fully purified, their mortality was a barrier they couldn't simply overcome by breaking through limits endlessly. The repercussions were inevitable, and they manifested as total fatigue. Their stamina plummeted to a dangerously low level, too weak to control the Aquafoam, which turned highly unstable. This instability began affecting them from the inside, first attacking their psyche, as it attempted to draw out every drop of energy they had left. This fundamental incompatibility was the reason their fusion ultimately failed. It was Akumu's ability that had led him to understand this. Akumu, known for his formidable power, was also a figure of quiet intelligence and deep understanding, especially of mysteries few dared to explore. Among the Sens, he was an outlier, not just for his strength, but for his keen intellect. It was Akumu who crafted the Ultra Instinct technique, a method so advanced that even the angels adopted it for their use, still relying on it in present times. This innovation sprang from his fascination with God Ki, a curiosity that deepened after he faced defeat at the hands of the previous God of Destruction from Universe 12. Driven by his defeat and obsession, Akumu delved into the essence of God Ki, grasping its fundamental nature. He unraveled the mysteries of its formation, the unique circumstances that brought it into being, and, most crucially, how to harness it. His quest for understanding didn't stop there. Akumu went a step further, mastering the aura of the angels themselves. With this newfound power, he developed Ultra Instinct, enabling a warrior's body to move independently of Konsu's thought, a perfect alignment with the angelic aura. Akumu's skills were not limited to physical prowess or energy manipulation. 
he possessed a remarkable mental projection ability, a tool that would play a crucial role in reawakening the Sens. This ability allowed Akumu to project his consciousness into the minds of others, creating illusions so vivid and encompassing that they were indistinguishable from reality. In these mental landscapes, every sense was activated. One could smell, taste, and feel, making the illusion terrifyingly real. In this domain of the mind, Akumu held the power to end a life, demonstrating the lethal potential of his unique skill. The process was as intriguing as it was fearsome. By simply placing his fingernail on Goku's forehead, Akumu's consciousness would depart from his physical form and embed itself within Goku's psyche. Meanwhile, his body remained in the physical world, motionless, as if frozen in time. Right after stepping into this mental realm, Akumu quickly noticed the lingering traces of angelic energy. His deep understanding of such energies meant that even the tiniest, almost invisible bits didn't escape his notice. This energy, though small and subatomic, was as clear as day to him. Following this trail of angelic aura, Akumu traced it back to its origin, leading him straight to Goku. There, in a vast space of darkness, stood Goku, lost and motionless, surrounded by a swirling mass of energy. This was the aquafoam, enveloping him, its presence a vivid whirl of activity in the otherwise still void.